There's a camera feature called white balance, which is often overlooked and not used to its full potential. In this week's video, I want to explore and dive a bit deeper into what white balance can do, and more importantly, how you can use it to improve and be more creative when taking photos with your digital camera. Welcome to the Photo Genius channel. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I share regular photography tutorials, all designed to help you get more from your digital camera so you can take better photos. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Now, as I said in the intro, this week's video is all about white balance, but with a particular emphasis on using white balance in a creative sense. Now, I appreciate that some of you watching may not know anything about white balance. So if you're a beginner or new to photography, let's just start with the basics first. What is white balance and how can we use it? Now, whether you're taking photos or recording video with your digital camera, mostly when it comes to colors, we want things to look realistic. We want the colors to represent what we see with our own eyes. And this is where the white balance function of a camera comes in, because adjusting and using the white balance correctly will affect how the colors are rendered in the final image. Now, to take advantage of this feature, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure your camera is out of the auto mode and you're using one of the manual or semi-manual modes. If you're a beginner, my recommendation is to use the P or program mode. Changing the white balance settings on a camera is usually pretty simple. Some cameras have a dedicated WB button. Alternatively, use what I like to call the shortcuts. This will be the Q button if you've got a Canon or Fujifilm camera, and if you've got a Nikon camera, it's the I button. This is an easy way to find and adjust your white balance settings. Now, as you can see, there are a few different options available and some cameras will have even more options than we see here. AWB or auto white balance is the default setting. Now in this mode, of course, the camera's looking after the white balance for you. And this may be good if you're a beginner, but there are other options and you should certainly consider these. Here you can see clearly what a difference a few minutes can make when taking photos towards the end of the day around sunset. The change is due to something called the temperature of light. Now this is why the camera allows us to change the white balance with options for shooting under natural light as well as artificial light. Now the basic idea is that you choose a white balance setting that matches the light under which you're shooting your subject. So this could be a sunny day, it could be an overcast day, maybe you're taking photos indoors under artificial light, or maybe you're in a studio using flash lighting. Take another look at this Canon camera and you will see that for every white balance setting, there is actually a number followed by the letter K. Now color temperature is measured in Kelvin degrees. This is named after the English physicist, William Kelvin. Adjusting the Kelvin value will adjust the color temperature from warm colors like red, orange, and yellow through to blue, which of course we refer to as a cool color. This chart shows how warm colors such as candlelight will have a lower Kelvin value of around 1000. Daylight sits midway at around 5000 Kelvin and the highest Kelvin values are the cooler colors, overcast days, skies and shooting under shade. Now, if you would like a copy of this handy chart that you can download to your phone for easy reference, then all you've got to do is visit the Photogenius website. It's absolutely free. You'll find a link in the description below this week's video. Now, I want to talk more about the Kelvin scale in just a moment, but first, let's take a look at the pros and cons of using auto white balance. Now, to be fair, auto white balance can be a good option, particularly if you're a beginner, because it will allow you to concentrate on other things like maybe focusing and balancing your exposure. But using auto white balance can sometimes give you inconsistent results. And occasionally there may be times where the camera's auto white balance gets it completely wrong and the color balance is completely out. As an example, here I am at the Rainforest Walk in Brisbane, a spot that I take my workshop students to as there's a nice water feature that we like to photograph. Now, as you can see, there is an abundance of green. In fact, most of the light is filtered by the leaves and the trees overhead. And this can sometimes lead to images looking a bit too warm with a distinctive yellow color cast. As you can see in these images, which were shot using the auto white balance, 
changing the white balance setting to cloudy improved things. The fluorescent lighting option actually came quite close, but it was the daylight mode that gave the best and most realistic looking image and colors. Now, because auto white balance can give us inconsistent results, I definitely don't recommend it if you're doing an advanced technique that involves taking multiple exposures. I'm talking about things like image stacking, um, HDR photography, maybe bracketing or creating panoramas. Taking a series of images and combining them to create one panorama does require consistency, not only in the white balance, but also in the exposure and the focus. Now, if you want to try this for yourself, then look out for my video on panoramic photography. You'll find a link in the description below this video. Now another tip I want to share, and this is for you if you like taking photos at sunrise or maybe sunset, try setting the camera's white balance to the cloudy option. I think you'll find you'll get better colors in the sky. Now there is another white balance option that most cameras will have. This is called the custom or sometimes the preset manual option. Let me show you how this works. To demonstrate, I'm going to be photographing a camera and a mug of tea. Now for the first image, the white balance is set to daylight. This is to match the color temperature of the LED light, which is set to 5,200 Kelvin, approximately the same as natural midday light. The result, as you can see, looks really good with great realistic looking colors. But now I'm going to adjust the color temperature of the light to 2900 Kelvin, which as you can see is a very warm color and closer to the light we would expect around sunset, often referred to as the golden hour. Now because the camera's white balance is still set to daylight, the camera has made no adjustments and the image therefore looks really warm and a long way from the first image. Now I want to show you how we can fix this using custom white balance. The first thing I need to do is to take an image of a gray card or a white piece of paper. And if you're wondering, the black scribble on the paper is so the camera has something to focus on. Now, of course, this image also looks terrible and the colors are really warm, but that's okay because what we've done is just taken a reference photo. So next, I go into the camera menu and select the custom white balance setting and select the image I want to use. Next, the camera is reminding me to make sure I change the white balance setting to custom and then I'm all set and ready to go. So I take another image and this time it's perfect. This is because the camera makes a series of adjustments based on the reference image. So as long as I continue to shoot under the same light as the reference image was taken, I'm good to go. Now some cameras will also give you the option of choosing a specific Kelvin value. Just look out for the K symbol in the white balance settings and then dial in the specific Kelvin value you need to get the results that you want. A few evenings ago, I set out to capture some shots of the city overlooking the Brisbane River. Now, as usual, I like to arrive early to ensure a good spot, set up, and of course, enjoy the views. Now, let's take a look at some images side by side. In terms of color, which one do you prefer? Or how about this image, taken seven minutes later, the sky now showing magenta and light purple tones. And what about this image? Which one of these two do you prefer? So in both cases, the images on the left were taken with the white balance set to auto. And for the images on the right, I chose to use the tungsten incandescent setting because I really like the cooler blue tones. But of course, which image you like the best is entirely up to you. So let me know in the comments, which did you prefer and why? Now remember, photography is an art form, so be as creative as you like. Bend the rules and adjust the white balance to get the results that you want. Okay, now it's time to take a look at adjusting the white balance when post-processing our images. Now whilst I do and also encourage you to try and get everything right in camera, sometimes things don't always go to plan. So take a look at this image for example that has a bluish cool tint. Now I'm using Lightroom and can easily make manual adjustments to the white balance using the temperature slider. But my tip is to use the white balance selector tool. All you need to do is grab the tool and pick a white or neutral gray part of the image. I'm going to go for the concrete wall behind the dancer because I know it was a light gray color. 
Now once selected, just one click of the mouse and the white balance is corrected. It's that easy. But please note that this is a raw image. Now if you want to give Lightroom a go for yourself, you will find a link below to a free trial version. Okay, so I really hope you've enjoyed this week's video all about white balance and you're going to get out there and be more creative and take amazing photos. If you did enjoy the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up because it does help the videos get noticed and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on future videos. Don't forget, if you want a copy of this handy white balance chart, you'll find a link in the description below where you can download it for free. All that's left is to say a big thank you once again for watching and I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya. Bye.